Good morning and happy Saturday morning to each and every one of you. It is now time for the First Baptist Church of Tarentum, Pennsylvania's thought for the day. And our prayer is that this thought would stick with us not only for today, but throughout the upcoming week, that indeed, as we face varied situations and circumstances, that indeed the Holy Spirit would bring these messages back to us. That is my prayer. And also, we need to write these down and post them somewhere so that we'll have them during our times of need to just remind us of what thus saith the Lord. Now, I would recommend that we write down the chapter and the verses in the book, as well as the thought for the day, because the thought for the day is what the Holy Spirit led me to glean from that word on that day. And it very well uh, may speak to you differently. And certainly there are um, portions of the scripture that I never ever speak upon and I never ever um, reference in these 10, 12, okay, 15 minute talks that we do on Saturday mornings. And so my prayer is, is that God's word would be our lead and our guide and that he would just use me as a tool on these Saturday mornings. Certainly we welcome the Holy Spirit's presence with us this morning. He is just so gracious and kind that on this morning, he stopped in and paid us a visit. And so for that, we just say, thank you, Lord. Please touch, please move in the way that only you know how. Yes, yes, we pray in Jesus' name. This morning's thought for the day, we are continuing into the Exodus, you all, and I'm getting more and more excited every week because many of us know where this narrative is heading and that we're taking a step-by-step -step approach to getting there. And I just love it. I love that we're not in a hurry. I love that each and every week we can bite off just a little bit and push on a little bit further. So praise God for that. This morning's thought for the day comes from Exodus, the 12th chapter, verses 37 through 42, picking right up where we were last week. Exodus, the 12th chapter, verses 37 through 42, and it reads, the Israelites journeyed from Ramses to Sukkoth, about 600,000 men on foot besides children. A mixed crowd also went up with them and livestock in great numbers, both flocks and herds. They baked unleavened cakes of the dough that they had brought out of Egypt. It was not leavened. It was not because they were driven out of Egypt and could not wait nor had they prepared any provisions for themselves. Ooh, you talking about faith. The time that the Israelites had lived in Egypt was 430 years. At the end of the 430 years, on that very day, all the companies of the Lord went out from the land of Egypt. That was for the Lord a night, a vigil, to bring them out of the land of Egypt. That same night is a vigil to be kept for the Lord by all the Israelites throughout their generations. Amen. Oh boy. So much in this text. And I, you know, you all know that I'm strange. I'm odd. I love to learn. Every time I read God's word, it just inspires me that much more. And I pray that it does the same for each of you. This is a good word, you all. It talks about, first of all, how many people went. That is amazing to me. You're talking about miracles. There were about 600,000 men on foot besides children. And now, you know, they didn't count the women either. So you're talking about over a million people 
leaving Egypt. Just imagine the scene as they take off walking, how long that caravan must have been as they were leaving Egypt, what that scene would have looked like. Let's use our sanctified imaginations since none of us were there and we don't have any photos or any other way to memorialize other, uh, this event other than for us to just consider it in our minds. All of these people, a million people, you all, we don't get a million people in any one place at the same time here today, in today's times. So I even think our envisioning a million people walking, leaving Egypt is something that our, our minds can't even understand or, or make sense of in any sort of way. A million people walking and leaving Egypt. A mixed crowd, they had their livestock in great numbers, both flocks and herds. And you remember that they took all the stuff from the Egyptians as well. The Egyptians had given them silver and gold and other livestock. I mean, they left with so much when they were marching away, away from Egypt, which quite frankly, and we'll get there in another week or two, um, is why Pharaoh went back after them. Because he probably looked around and was like, we have lost our minds to allow a million people in all of their flocks to leave. Who's going to do the work around here? But I'm ahead of myself and we'll get to that when we get to that. So they left. Um, following up on last week's message, when they left, um, they took unleavened bread because the leaven has to, raid, to rise, baker's terms. It has to rise. And they didn't have time. They couldn't wait. They couldn't wait. Because you remember last week we talked about that. Uh, I, I believe the thought for the day was, I told you to be ready uh, because we uh, saw the Israelites being warned over and over again to do what needed to be done to be ready to go, to make preparations for the deliverance of God. Then we see, and we'll come back to that briefly. And so then we see that they didn't make any additional provisions for themselves. They took what they had and they left. It had been 400 30 years that they had been in Egypt. Now, all of those years were not years of slavery. Remember that during Joseph's lifetime, they were living the good life over in Goshen, uh, which was a, a, a suburb, let's say, of Egypt. Uh, so they were living a, a good life, uh, but total it was 430 years and hundreds of those years were lives that were led and spent in slavery. Yeah. How many years that they must have been waiting, waiting for the deliverance from God. They were praying and they were crying, asking God to deliver them from the thing that had them bound. We do the same thing. It might not be for hundreds of years, but certainly we pray and we cry and we also wait for the deliverance of God. And there's lots of different things that we're praying and crying and waiting for. And it's often different for each of us. We, we're facing uh, difficult times in our lives because we all do. And, and I can say that with confidence that there is something in our lives that we are struggling with, that we've been praying about, that we've been seeking God's intervention for. And certainly during those times of praying, quiet, crying and waiting, as we've talked about throughout these scripture texts, we should have been preparing and we should have been getting ourselves ready so that when the time comes for us to move, we will be able to take advantage. When God opens the door 
for us to walk through, we ought be ready to go. There is no time for us to, to be fearful. Um, there should be no hesitation um, because we don't know how big that window is, how much time we really have to get moving. When God opens a window or a door, we got to get through it. We have to get through it and, and move when he says move so that we could take advantage of that situation. Um, I can remember, oh my goodness, I'm going to say this because it's about my husband and I'm choosing to. Um, before we started dating, when he reached out to me to start a more personal relationship instead of a business relationship. Many years later, after we were married, he told me that he felt that he had to do it right then. He felt led to do it and that if he did not do it, he was going to miss his opportunity to do it. He felt compelled to do it right then. And I praise God that he did and that he was obedient to the what was only the Holy Spirit. We have to do the same in our lives, you all. When God presents that opportunity, whether it's to start a new business or take on a new job or move to a new home or even move to a new state and city, we have to move when the door and the window has been opened for us. And I praise God for that. I'm aware of some of your moves and I know that you did just that. And I praise God for it. You know who you are. I praise God for that. No fear, no hesitation. Walk through the door because we've been the ones praying and crying and waiting for it. And because after all of that praying and crying, guess what? The wait is over at least for that situation, because shoot, as humans, give us a few days and we'll have another one. But for that situation, the wait, the wait is over. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is our thought for the day. The wait is over. Amen. Oh, I praise God. The wait is over. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you right now for those times of praying, crying, and waiting. Because we know that during those times, Lord, we you are preparing us to be able to walk through the windows, the doors that you will open for us. My prayer, Heavenly Father, is that we would be able to see you in the midst. That we would be patient in our waiting, diligent in our praying and without fear or hesitation when it's time to move. Heavenly Father, our prayer, Lord Jesus, is that you would cause us to recognize and know that the wait is over. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You're just so loving and just so kind, and we thank you. Mm. We thank you. Heavenly Father, we lift you up and we praise your holy name on this morning. In the magnificent, the awesome, the all-powerful name of Jesus, we do pray. Amen, amen, and amen.